Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with William Hill Empire Fight. So I'm delighted to be joined by former British light heavyweight champion Maurice Corr. Maurice, we're here in Champs Camp, the Phil Martin Centre, as you will. Um, been doing a bit of a interview session with all Joe Gallagher's fighters today and this gym seems to be buzzing. How excited are you to see Joe bring his crop of fighters in here and really get this gym buzzing again? I'm very excited because Joe's, um, me and Joe have been talking now for probably, a, well, we've been talking all, all the time anyway, but for a, probably about a year and a half been talking about stuff. But we never ever mentioned about, you know, the gym, um, him coming to the gym. And then Joe started coming in with one fighter and then talking about, I bring another one down. And he went on this, this for about six months. And when he brought them down, he was, I could see, Joe's um, enthusiasm, he, he was there. He wants to tell all these fighters, um, he's proud that this is where he's from. Um, he wants to show them everywhere, you know, the history about the gym. And, you know, I don't really see that in, in, in trainers. You know, um, Joe's, Joe's showing something else there. You know, he's come there. I mean, Joe's that champion of the champion. He's made his own gym, you know, his Gallagher's gym. but. It, it, the bottom line is he's come here to this gym and he's never ever forgotten it and that's that's one thing about Joe he's loyal in that sense you know what I mean when I spoke to Joe one thing he said was he goes you go to I don't know LA you visit the wild cards you go to all these different places you associate with one gym we want to get people going we go to Manchester we're off to champs camp you know to bring that sort of feel good factor back about this place and to get it get it moving on again um, it's obviously an emotional thing for Joe who obviously works under Phil Martin here how important is it that you guys and everyone were try, you try to honour obviously Phil's legacy and what he did for this place because he took a lot of kids off the estate brought them in here try to show them a better life and how you can improve through boxing how important is it that sort of his legacy is continued very important because um, that was Phil's goal and ambition um to make champions out of you know, just normal, normal people, normal kids. Phil um, first had a vision about this when he was boxing, just after he finished boxing, uh, probably back in the seventies, uh, late seventies. He had um, he had a vision then, and he, and he used to say to a fellow um, fighter, Lance Lewis, "Why is no boxing gym in this area?" And he had his vision, and you know Phil was um, very upbeat kind of person, get things done. Um, stand up for the, the, the people, it's more like a people's person. So we started the gym with the ambition. We never used to be in here. We used to be in the corner of Clement Road there, and we're sharing a gym um, with a, a martial artist called Chip. We're sharing the gym in there, but it wasn't Phil's own gym. And Phil's always had the ambition to have his own place. Yeah. Anyway, this place come available. Um, it was a co op. And co -op. yeah, it was a co op. And, and upstairs, it just is empty. It's just derelict. So Phil says, this building's come available, and I think about moving in there, so all the lads went, oh, come over here, and was like, this is just a wreck, you know, these places. we never seen anything at all. They couldn't envision it, what it looked like, one bit, but Phil could. Phil and his wife, Audrey, they could see everything, and this is this is one, this is one of Phil's natural talents. It, it, it's just unique, because Phil could see the future, and we couldn't. And he used to show us and say, no, I'm going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to put this up there. And he made it all work. Can I go into this now? Because I know we're going to clear up the question what you've asked me. Go on. But um, go for it. He, um, he had us all working. He had us all working in there. Um, in a way, I don't know where that was. <laughs> he had us all working in there. Um, and we all had, we had little talents. One guy was a welder. One guy was a joiner. Even me, I was doing nothing. You know, he could sweep up, do whatever you want, knock this down, do that. He had us all doing something, and he made us out with doing something for the government. So he got back into the government scheme, uh, made us out with working, but we were working. It was more yeah. like training, to say the truth. And um, bit by bit, you know, room by room, we come available. And it was like, geez, we can see a little bit now, you know. And then he felt like big ambitions. No, we're not stopping here. We're going to go there. And we're going to get an extension on this, and we're going to put this down here. And, you know, and day by day we're seeing different things happening and developing yeah. and it's more belief and more strength you had if we're, we're filling that corner. How special a man was he? Um, I spoke to 
to Joe about it and he obviously is keen on doing something here and you can tell like I said you mentioned enthusiasm how Joe walks around this gym like it is a home away from home how sort of special of a man was Phil Martin in terms of what he's done for the area you just mentioned what he did in the gym here but what he really sort of did for this you know the community um, <clears throat> you know if I could put one word on Phil um, I, I couldn't probably say nothing you know because he's just a special individual um, Phil's been gone now for nearly 30 years and people are talking about him today like he was, you know, last week he passed away. Um, I still hear stories myself about Phil. I love to hear stories about Phil. You know, some people come in the gym still um, and they give me a buzz because they say, Phil, this, and no one's got a bad story to say about him. It's always encouragement. It's always something what Phil's done for them and it just makes me drive, you know what I mean, because keeps my drive and enthusiasm about Phil. Um, I was saying with Joe as well, you know, Joe, Joe's, um, he's left the gym, he's come back, you know, but even when he was gone, he, he didn't forget his roots kind of thing. He knew exactly where he's got his training methods from, where he's got him as a person, his belief, and he's passed it on to his generation of fighters. You know, he, he's very loyal. Um, he'll, go to, he'll go to the grave with um, his belts that he's won and laid them on Phil's grave. All this time, he's not been in the gym, but, but, he knows where it's coming from. And that's the one thing that stood out with me, um, why Joe's coming back as well, because I don't mind that, because yeah. Joe is very loyal. Some people, you know, as you know, in life, forget where they're coming from. Joe never has, you know, and Joe, like I said, Joe could have started his own stable, which he did. He could have forgot about this and said, this is me, this is all I've done. But he's, he's got a lot of respect in that sense. He'll come back here and he'll always, and you can tell by, I said, you said his enthusiasm, the way we his, you know, you know, he's coming here, he's 100 mile an hour. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Joe, <laughs> that's good, that Joe. And he goes, no, no, no. I said, like today, I said to him, you're thinking big, aren't you, Joe? And I, he's like, you got to think big. He's like telling him, you got to think big, you got to think bigger, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, he's right. You know, he's got a discipline, what we all had uh, when, when, when Phil was there, he gives a discipline. There's a sign downstairs about discipline. You know, we all read it every single day. And it's obviously paying its dues because Joe is like that, I am like that as well. Yeah, you can tell when Joe's you know, it's obviously on it. Like you say downstairs, he's very much like, you know, you had all them fighters in. And I asked him, how do you sort of balance this stable of fighters? You know, you've got like 12 over here doing a bag. You've got some over here sparring. You're running around almost like, a, you know, Headless chicken, trying to make sure everyone's doing it, but I think he just says that's how it's always been. We've had these big stables and we keep turning them around. What's the what's the sort of long term that you want to see happen with this gym? Whether it be just the name getting bigger or we get more fighters through the door here, is it about getting visits off world champions, taking people off the street? What's the what's the long term? You know, if you could say in ten years time, you're sat in champs camp. Where do you want this sort of story to go, kind of thing? Well. I know where it starts. It starts with Phil, you know. Um, Phil Martin is, is the start of this and, and the success of this as well, you know, Alpha and Amiga. So what I would say, um, I'd love things to continue the way they have. I'd love someone to get... Because um, people have asked me, where, where, what happens next after you've gone? Who's going to take over then? And I'm saying, mm, good question, because I'm not too sure if they can have the same ethos um, like I had in Phil I'm not too sure if they can have that same drive you know what keeps driving me what I had in Phil you know someone has to see that in me as well but they can also see that with Joe Gallagher because Joe's here and Joe's got this drive because um, Joe came from another gym yeah, and, to, and to see to see that he's stuck in this gym and the way he's gone about it and everything's Phil 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 which I'm 100% happy with because I thought I was the only loyal one but Joe was the other loyal one, a very loyal, 100% loyal person. Um, where do I see you going? The question, um, I see this carrying on. I see this carrying on. I, I, and Phil's drive was people, um, people can have ambition, no matter where they're from, and no matter who they are, and they can have the success what every successful person mm -hmm. has had and draw far through their life as well. You were obviously close to Phil, so how... Um but where did that where did that drive come from in him to do all this and to build this and sort of make this home to 
do all this thing for the community. Where where did that come from in him? Is that just was he always sort of a natural, a natural like giver? You know, wanting to help, wanting to give back. Where did where did it come from? Well, if, if, I mean, we used to talk Phil all the time. He used to tell me things all the time. But um, with Phil, he always he always was um, he always just said to us, "If anybody offers you help, take it." He always he always said that. No matter where you are in life, take it. No matter who you are, no matter how well you're doing. And Joe, Joe was the same mentality as well. I've noticed a lot of people around there helping him. And he could turn around and say, you know, it's all right, I'm fine. I'm too big for you, you know, you're below me. But he just takes it, and that's where I, de I deal with things as well. Where Phil got that passion from um, is probably somewhere back in his life, because Phil wasn't um, a person that had everything in his life. He had nothing. Yeah. He came from a background, um, I won't go into it too much, but, you know, yeah. poverty, you know, Parents, you know, yeah. wasn't the best. There was no parent, to tell you the truth, you know what I mean? So he knows when I used to go in Phil's house, um, not speaking out of turn there, when he's used to go in Phil's house, there's, there was, um, the cupboards are always full, the, 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 the food cupboards, and he still come in with like four or five bags of shopping yeah. because he never had no food in his house when he was growing up. And he's always used to seeing empty cupboards and just something that stuck in his head. So he's always... <laughs> something like that going on, you know, um, his wife, you know, he, he, you know, as there's so many interviews out there where Phil was in the house and she would say, she'd want the house bought and that kind of thing. And Phil would say, well, we're doing all right. We've got a gym. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of thing. And he was happy with that. And she was in turn happy with that. I mean, he bought his house in the end, but he was happy to have the gym full of fighters. And he was getting the drive from that. He's getting the push from that. Also as well, I think, um, when Phil was boxing, he didn't get the, the. Sometimes he got ripped off in fights. Things yeah. didn't go. He could see things that was wrong, i.e., with managers and the way they were treated. Um, the fighters were treated through, through that, and he had a drive to put things right. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when um, Phil was fighting, Phil was, Phil was the first black promoter to be a manager, promoter, and trainer at once. He's the only one doing that at the time, as far as I'm aware, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so he had, a, he, had a, he, had a, he had a drive from that as well. And the fact that he took these kids off the street and started with nothing like myself and made us to a champion, you know, I don't see anyone doing that even, these, even today. I think almost that's the perfect way to leave this because it just says a lot about the man and the gym. Um, you got a message to anyone who wants to come to Champs Camp and get down here? <laughs> get down to Champs Camp, Joe Gallagher's back, boy. <laughs> yeah, let's go on. So the intensity in this gym is brilliant. It's got a great vibe. And obviously there's people like yourself here who have got the knowledge, the history of the place. Uh, very welcoming. And look, I look forward to coming back again. Today was my first visit. Definitely won't be the last. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for having us down. You're welcome. Any time at all, you're ready. Anybody else, you're welcome. You know, just come down and do your thing and um, try it out and see if it's for you or not. Much appreciated. Thank you for talking to Boxing Social. Thank you.